Hello Key Stage 4 and welcome to your 7th 3D design lesson. Now in today's lesson we're going to be moving on from our mark making on cardboard and take it a bit further by making some different marks using paper. In particular we're going to be focusing on this fish scale pattern what I've made here. Now each individual scale is made out of a cut piece of paper and I've took it down to a small piece of cardboard as you can see in the back there. So what I'm going to do is teach you how to make these effectively and efficiently and maybe go through a few things that it could be used for in terms of the technique and what the actual application could be for. Obviously some of you already have used the technique to make some birds feathers with, some of you might use this technique to make a fish scale pattern but lots, lots of things in 3D design we might use pattern and I think this is a good lesson just to get you into the swing of making templates again and um, cutting out things in a different technique. So let's get started. First of all, you're going to need um, a ruler, a pencil, a piece of cardboard, a glue stick, and a piece of paper. Then you can use your piece of paper that you've got in your packs, or you could use a plain piece of paper lying around at home. If you wanted to, you could splash some coffee onto that piece of paper, or you could use an old page of a book that you don't read anymore. It's completely up to you. But for this demonstration, I'm going to use plain paper. First of all, we're going to need something to stick our um, scales down to, our paper scales to. So what we're going to do is make a small rectangle. Um, I'm going to measure from a neat side. Obviously that side is pretty rough, so I might use this one because it's quite square. So I'm going to measure a 5cm line across the top. Five centimeters there. Let me zoom in a bit so you can see properly. So that five centimeter mark is there. Bring it down and measure five centimeters near the bottom somewhere and join that line up. Remember, we always need to draw two marks if we're going to try and draw a straight line. Measure the top, measure the bottom somewhere. Now we're going to turn it. And along that line we've just measured, I'm going to measure, do on a square, a nice rectangle, maybe 8 centimetres, to measure at the top, 8 centimetres, bring it down, measure near the bottom, 8 centimetres, which if I hold that steady, it's going to be around there somewhere, a bit further up actually, and we're going to join those two lines together. That right and you're going to quickly cut that out i've made one here to save in the cutting but obviously make sure your cuts nice and neat to get those out okay next we're going to need our plain piece of paper so keep it uh horizontal landscape rather than portrait for now and what we're going to do first is measure the bottom line so make sure your piece of paper is on zero of the ruler down here and we're going to measure every two centimeters so just make a little 14 I'm only going, going to go up to 14 because I don't think I'll need the rest of the piece of paper there and then of course like we just explained we need to make two marks if you're making a straight line so at the top make sure that's zeroed in there and mark now you've done those marks, so we can join those two marks up. So make sure you really pass it through the top mark and through the bottom. Double check it, and then make your mark, and then... You're going to fold this and make a small fan. So what you need to do is turn your piece of paper over for now, and fold the first flap up to that line. So you want to find that two centimeter line. I found that line, I pinched it down there. And what I find is easy to do now, if you just make sure it's on the edge of this piece of paper, you make sure that that is adjacent to that, so it's nice and flat and lines up. You should flatten it out nice and straight on that two centimeter mark. Okay, so remember, fold it up, find your line, then you want to push down on that centre bit, go to the edge, make sure they're lined up and then flatten it out to the other side. Okay, the next bit should be fairly easier. 
as we're just going to fold every other one. So make sure on this one, I'm going to fold this bottom line up to this third line up there now. Okay. So same again, find it in the middle. going to have to cut that line because what we're going to be doing is cutting through this you don't what you don't want is a big thick pile to have to cut through because it can get quite tough to cut through them so I'm gonna quickly cut this off Across that line now what I found was easier to do was to make a small cardboard template of the scale that you that you want and the size that you need so if you want to go ahead and grab yourselves a scrap piece of cardboard maybe from the bit that you started off with And that is a template that we can then draw around. Hmm. Okay, I we'll start on this side. Now, starting from one side and moving down to the other, we're going to draw around our template each time to make sure our scales are even as we go. So keep one finger on there, draw around your template. And you should be able to get the same shape every single time when you go around it. Because we've got all these this corrugated cards together, we can cut around this shape and we should end up with four or five scales, depending on how many folds we've done, that drop out in one. But because, because there is a fold there, you'll find that these scales will have two in one, like this one. Look. So what we need to do, I shouldn't have let go there, what we should do is cut off the bottom, just a little strip off the bottom, so we can use them separately. So I've got two scales rather than one that's stuck together. So I'll show you how to do it properly on this next one. So you're going to cut it out. Nice and carefully. Cut around this top bit is probably the hardest bit to do. And remember, if you fold it too many times and it's too tough to cut through, then maybe just take one of those folds out. So whilst we're still pinching it, we need to cut off the bottom to make sure they all come separately. And oh, that one's still there, look together. So cut that one off a tiny bit. So they're all separate then. Let me do the same for this one here and that one there. That's still stuck together. Okay. So, once you've done that, we then need to begin the pattern. So, what I think a good technique to do is, just have your glue stick right there. Maybe touch the glue stick a tiny bit with your finger. And you're going to pick it up with your end of your finger and you're going to glue the back end of it, the flat edge. So you couldn't really see that then, could you? You're going to glue the flat edge. Not all of it, just that flat edge. Now the reason why we're not going to glue all of it is so we can get that nice flick on all these scales. So we can actually prise them up and make it a bit more three-dimensional if you can see those there uh... so to my finger still a bit sticky so I bring it up a bit glue on the back
my first layer. So for the second layer, it's important now, it's where the pattern comes into it. You need to think about where the middle of those two scales meet. Let's zoom in a bit more. So, our next one needs to be stuck in the middle between this line where the line forms. Not right at the top, leaving a bit of a gap, but in the middle of those two lines. And the next one, make sure it's on the same sort of line. Make sure that the, the top, the peak of this round, rounded bit is in the middle of those two there. We try and start from one side and move to the next. So the key thing on this is to stick only put glue on the base of your scale. Make sure you follow the pattern and keep it nice and orderly. Okay. So after you've covered all of those right down to the bottom, you should end up with a complete one like this. Okay, right, thank you. I would remember you can go back and pause the video and look at key parts of the lesson. But I look forward to seeing what you upload. Thank you for watching.